Hey, everybody. That's right. You heard right. Oh, yeah, and I forgot the induction. Hello, everybody. I am the multi-voice reviewer. I have many voices, but one opinion. Today's review, this is exactly as it uh, says on the title. Filipino Superhero Invasion. Ever since I uh, did... Ever since um, I did the top 10 female superheroes, and uh, for those who haven't watched it, and for those who didn't, spoilers, it's Darna, my favorite Filipino superhero. I mean, I uh, declared her as number one on my account because I really like Darna. I like her more than Wonder Woman, more than Catwoman, more than any other female superheroes I laid eyes on. So. With that much said, one thing I did do, though, I watched one of my old videos, and I did my Darna review, and one thing I did had a problem is that nobody hadn't made a Darna action figure. Well, here's the thing, folks. They did made a Darna action figure, but not the one I'm hoping for. They made a Fungo Pop Darna action figure. Now, you think that would be pretty cool for me to collect, but no. I'm sorry, folks, but I don't like Fungo Pop. I just don't. I just think they're kind of designed for kindergartens. And, I mean, I know they're making tons and tons and tons of different figurines of different characters from every franchise. But, to me, I prefer action figures with more detail. And Fungal Pop doesn't have that many detail. I mean, they're big heads, small bodies, and beady eyes. That's why I don't care much about Fungal Pop. So, can you at least create a Darna action figure with more detail? Something that's designed closely to the comic books or any of the uh, TV shows or the latest movie coming up? Please let me know. But enough with the Darna aside and my uh, thoughts about Fungal Pop. Something else I also discovered. They did have a Filipino actor playing a character on the latest Spider-Man movie. Now, I know what you're saying. I mean, some of you probably know and some of you don't know, I don't like Spider-Man. I'm sorry to say this, folks, but it's true. I really don't care about Spider-Man. I find him annoying. And I know some of you diehard fans will be thinking... They think I can relate to J. Jonah Jameson. Heck, I do a good impression of him. If you show me some pictures of Spider-Man, you're, you're hired. If you're not going to show me some pictures of Spider-Man, then you're fired. This Spider-Man is a menace to society. Why does he wear a mask? What has he got to hide? If he doesn't want to be famous, then I'll make him infamous. I always like doing the voice of J. Jonah Jameson. That Spider-Man is a menace to society, and he should be dealt with by the court of law! Now, I usually don't spread horrible rumors about superheroes. Because it's not my thing. I hate slander. It is not. I resent that. Slander is spoken. In print, it's libel. But, in Spider-Man uh, Homecoming and Far From Home, oh yeah, I did heard that Sony wanted their Spider-Man back, so now Spider-Man's no longer part of the MCU. Which I gotta say, that's a bummer. If you ask me... Well, if you ask me, Sony can kiss my... Anyway, everybody, there is this one actor. Now, according to his IMDb, it says that he's from, from Hawaii. But from his roots, he's Philippine, F Filipino, and his name is Jacob Batalon, who plays Ned, Le Ned Leeds. Ned Leeds. Now, I'm, I printed this out because it's connecting. The character he pre plays, Ned, is in the comic books. Except in the comic books, Ned works in the Daily Bugle along with Spider-Man. And, um... In his story, the Hobgoblin shows up, and he brainwashes Ned, making him think he's the Hobgoblin, but the real Hobgoblin is at large. 
You know, that kind of wonders me. How come when they introduced the Green Goblin in the original Spider-Man, why don't they introduce the Hobgoblin? We'll be interesting to see. But um, ever since uh, Jacob here played uh, Ned, now in the comic books they made him look more like him. So I think it's time for a change that the, that the world should know that now we're having Filipino superheroes in our comic books. Now, I'm picking the ones from uh, Marvel and DC because they're the only they're the only comic books I'm more I have more knowledge to. I don't have uh, any Filipino characters from uh, Valiant Comics, IDW, Image or Top Cow, Dark Horse, um, Dynamite Entertainment or even uh, IDW. I don't have any of those characters. I mean, I don't know any of those characters from those companies. But anyway, much of my uh, chagrin, though, there is one Filipino superhero in the DC Comics, and the superhero who is from the Philippines is none other than Captain Steel from the DC Comics. Now, uh, for those of you who don't know who Captain Steel is, he's from the third generation of the... Of the um, Hollywood family, Hank Hollywood was the first uh, was the first Steel character. Now he had like some some kind of um, some kind of bone disease makes him weak. So he did some experiments and covered his entire skeletal with metal, kind of like Wolverine, and it made his um, made his skin and his body hard as a rock. He calls himself Commander Steel. And then there was another one who goes by the name of Natural Steel. And then there was Steel from the superhero comics that Shaquille O'Neal played, which we never want to mention that one. And this Steel is a third generation. His name is Hank Hollywood Jr., but he's not from the main universe of the DC Comics. He's from Earth 2, an alternate universe where everything is very much different. Like, on Earth 2, there is uh, Alan Scott Green Lantern, who turns out to be the first gay Green Lantern character, and not like the Golden Age Alan Scott. But anyway, in this story, he has the same bone disease, just like his father, so his dad decided, so his dad decided to do something for his son. He covered his entire skeletal with steel, and therefore, he became Captain Steel, a third generation of the Hollywood family. Now, his story was doing pretty good so far, but um, sadly, to most of the fans and such, they killed off this character. It's pretty sad. You know, DC needs to stop killing off characters. I mean, there is one character I really like from the DC comics that I wish they should have done more of, which is the Jokester. Now, for those of you who don't know who the Jokester is, it was during the uh, comic book series called The uh, Countdown, which is the most number one god-awful comic book series ever made. The Jokester, his name is Jack. And he was a failed stand-up comedian. All the jokes he said, nobody doesn't find him funny. Until, um, until uh, Owlman, an evil version of Batman, tosses him into the Ace Chemical Plant. And now he becomes the jokester. And he fights crime with his Joker ways. I mean, unlike the Joker who is sick, twisted, psychotic, and evil, the jokester, he's good, kind, and very loyal to those who do good. But in the alternate universe, all the heroes are zeros, while the villains are the are the number one. And Owlman was a member of the crime syndicate, the evil version of the Justice League. I mean, I like this Joker character so much, but they killed him off and hinting that he'll never return. Come on, DC! You made a bunch of good characters and you keep killing them off? Come on! I mean, I know New Birth is still going. New Birth is still running pretty good. But um, at least bring back some of the dead ones and continue on their legacy for once in, your, in their company life. 
Do you know why kids stop reading comic books these days? Because they're a lot smarter than the writers! <sighs> anyway, sorry for getting off topic here, folks. But Marvel, they did a pretty good job of creating some interesting Filipino superheroes. At first, they started creating a group of Filipino superheroes. Some of them got their powers from technology. Some of them got their power powers from uh, mystical creatures and whatnot. And therefore created a team of superheroes in the Marvel comics who are called... The Triumph Division, led by uh, Red Feather, St. George, Mighty Mother, Anaton, Fighter One, Wishing Man, and Mighty Mongoose. Now, their legacy was starting to um, go into a full swing when Iron Man himself went to the Philippines to meet them. And as, um, and as when the, the Filipino world was about ready to greet the, uh, the Triumphs Division, all of a sudden, one of their, um, one of their, um, monks, the Shaolin monks, planted a bomb on one of their, uh, rosary, and it exploded, killing off all of them. But there's going to be hinting that there's going to be some other people who's going to replace them. So at least, even though they're gone, they will not be forgotten. But there is a brand new Filipino superhero who is ready starting to bloom and about to shine in the, in the Marvel world and for the Philippines. And that character is none other than The Wave. Now, I don't know much about her origins yet. I mean, I just started reading about her. But according to her, she got her powers from underwater. So she's kind of like uh, maybe a female Filipino version of Aquaman. She had these, um, these uh, mystical high-tech wings where she can fly, on, fly in the air and dive underwater. And she has these... Uh, water mystical swords that she uses weapons when she's battling against either sea monsters or evil bad guys who did, who dares to cause trouble into the Philippines. This character is getting pretty popular today and is getting really really known in America that now they decide her they at first she was one she was part of the uh, Triumphs division but now she starts joining another group of top secret Marvel agents who calls himself the agents of Atlas. Now, back in the 50s, the agent of Atlas was a group of misfit, super-powered Marvel characters who decided to do good and um, trying to be a little better than S.H.I.E.L.D. I mean, even though they're a group of misfits, they've proven themselves to use their powers for good. So now this brand new uh, agent of Atlas is now run by Jimmy Yo. And now all the characters in this group are all Asian. Believe it or not. They're either Asian or Asian American. Now we have uh, special agent uh, Jimmy Woo. But you have I.O. Carissant, I think I got her name right, Luna Snow, Swordmaster, Silk, Amandus Cho, who's supposed to be this uh, Chinese uh, Incredible Hulk, and Iru, and also the one that they're going to make a movie based from, Chang Chi. That's right, Chang Chi was a member of the Agent of Atlas. Huh. Since, since I heard that the MCU is going to be making a movie about uh, Chang Chi, and on this movie he's going to be dealing with the real Mandarin, does that mean that he's going to be, he's going to be, he's going to meet uh, Jimmy Rue 
and um, create an organization called the Agent of Atlas and have uh, Chang Shi be a member of it? Who knows? But if you ask me, I say that's awesome. I think it's time. I think it's time for the um, for the Asian superheroes to start shining in the world. Besides the Philippines, I think it's time for anybody who's Asian from any Asian cultures to team up together, create a a, a, a brilliant superhero team. And heck, having Wave, having Wave being popular enough in the Marvel comics and she goes on in her adventures and having a brand new team of the uh, Triumphs Division and the Agent of Atlas, I think this is the beginning for Asian people to become superheroes in, a, in America and start making a difference for the world. Heck, I still wish that the... Um, I mean, I'm still wishing that the uh, that Darna, Captain Barbell, Captain Boom, Elastic Man, Diasabel, uh, Cristala, Vija, Teeny Tani, Zaza Zainterna, all those Filipino superheroes to be heard here in America. I mean, heck, I mean, the Japanese created Dragon Ball. Um, the Dragon Ball series, and everybody now is no Goku, and even they created uh, Astro Boy, and now he's being really popular here in America, and even they brought Godzilla, and of course the Chinese, they have their uh, own characters that some of us probably heard and remember and love, so I think it's time for us to be heard, I mean, I think it's time for the Filipino superheroes to be heard and be popular in America. Well, this is my uh, review for the day. Now, did I get everything right? Did I pronounce the name right? Try to You can correct me if you want. I mean, I don't care. And if I left out any Filipino superheroes from other companies, like if there is a Filipino superhero from Image, Last Top Cow, Dynamite Entertainment, I, IDW, Dark Horse or Valiant Comics, or any of those companies, please leave a comment down below, and I'll look them up and see what I think, and probably mention them. Heck, I even heard there's a couple of Filipino characters in manga, so that's a good start. Anyway, this is Multi-Voice Reviewer telling you all, see you soon. Goodbye.